Okay, my name is Shah Nawaz Ahmed, and I am teaching this subject for uh, uh, the ACC subject uh, for the last 16, and you can say last 17 years. Uh, and primarily, I am teaching tax, financial reporting, and financial management uh, in the fundamental level as well as in the advanced level. Now, as far as this uh, subject is concerned, uh, first of all, we will discuss the all the pros and cons of this subject, all the ins and outs, all the details of this subject, and uh, the examination team response, the feedback of examination team, as well as the uh, examiner report extract, and also the topics that we have to cover in this syllabus, and the examination pattern as well. So first of all, let's begin with what is included in the uh, syllabus and how that's going to be examined. Because the pattern of the exam is very important. How you can approach the exam is very important. What should be in the mind when you have to uh, attempt your exam? First of all, this paper is an advanced version of uh, the exam that is called taxation, previously F6. Those who have already studied that paper, they know something about taxation that how to calculate income tax, how to calculate corporation tax, inheritance tax. But those who are coming from the exemption route or have uh, uh, like uh, attempted that paper before like a uh, few years back and they have no knowledge about the previous examination. So don't bother about that. We'll start from the scratch. We'll discuss each and everything from the start. So. Let's assume that you don't have any prior knowledge about tax exam. Still, you will be comfortable in this paper. So first of all, as you know that this is a professional paper and an optional paper as well. So uh, this particular paper, uh, we can say that uh, comprises of uh, two sections, section A and section B. So as far as the composition of the paper is concerned, we have section A comprises of 60 marks and section B comprises of 40 marks. This is the composition of the paper. Now in section A, you can see here, there are two compulsory case study question in which question one is a very long one comprises of 35 marks while question two question next question has only 25 marks so 35 plus 25 is total 60 marks in section a now in section a always there are five marks related to ethics it means that if you cover the ethical portion of the syllabus which is very short you know you know the responsibility of the uh, consultant so you can easily score mark in section a learning as well as already four professional marks in question I will guide you along that how you can these four professional marks. Must be familiar about that uh, now is a change in the uh, professional papers, but in ATX uh, still we have the same and there is no 20 professional marks now in ATX that will be applicable from 2023. So the approach is same as with the previous exam. Now, as far as the section B is concerned, there are two compulsory 20 mark question, means 20 mark cover the uh, corporation aspects as well as the personal tax issues. Now, compared to section A, the section B questions has less information, less burden in terms of information. Section A questions are always very lengthy and uh, have multiple tax issues multiple requirements so student finds it difficult 
to attempt section A question and they find it very easy to attempt section B type question. And remember that we have 40, uh, we have 50 passing marks. So if any student uh, score well in section B, and there is a good chance to score at least 50 marks and, the pa and to pass this paper in first attempt. Now, one question is, how much is the combination of calculation and theory? So remember that this paper is, is mainly of theoretical aspects rather than calculation. So the mix is more of theory and less of calculation. But the paper comprises of both calculation and narrative work and you will be given the scenarios and in that scenario multiple tax issues will be asked and that will cover the planning related to taxation as well as the personal taxation the corporation taxation inheritance tax value-added tax and lots of issues your exam is standard three-hour paper and you will be given a text sheet comprises of tax rates, allowances, information, means those information given in the text sheet, you don't need to memorize. And remember that those students who memorize well, who learn well, who memorize the text rules well, they can easily pass this paper. It's all about the text rules, nothing else. If you know the text rules and an exam, you can, you can, write those text rules then you can easily pass this paper problem is that the syllabus is huge and you have to work gradually on a daily basis regular basis you have to memorize those rules and uh, you have to just apply in terms of theory and in terms of calculation when needed now what are the syllabus topics on successful completion of this exam, candidate should be able to, number one, the understanding of UK tax system. As we are preparing for the UK tax, the variant is UK tax. So you must know, you must be familiar with the UK tax system. And in UK tax system, you must know that uh, what is the in rule re related with income tax, what is the rule related with corporation tax? Similarly, the capital gain tax, inheritance tax, value added tax, and as well as some advanced topic such as how to apply stem duty tax, how to calculate stem duty tax. And also you have to understand the different situation where different tax systems are interrelated. For example, there might be a situation where there is an interaction of CGT and IHT. There might be a situation when you are closing your uh, unincorporated business and now you are transferring that business into a company, how that can be handled. Similarly, there are lots of exemptions. There are lots of tax reliefs. For example, if a company or an individual is having losses, then examiner will ask how many types of reliefs available and how best you can utilize your reliefs. So you have to give your client advice on minimizing or deferring tax liabilities using the tax planning majors. For example, you are selling an asset and that created a gain of suppose 200,000. Now you can defer that particular tax by investing the money into a new asset. So you should learn the rule how you can defer your tax liability. And is that deferring is beneficial for you? Or should you pay now or later on? Similarly, you have to communicate with your client, with HM Revenue and Customer, the tax authority, and other professionals in an ethical way. I told you that five marks are all always available for ethics and at the end you have to demonstrate the employability and technology skills now this is a cbe exam so the function will be like you have to be provided with uh, given with the word space and excel for calculation you have to use these two tools and you know that these are mandatory now 
so you'll be familiar with uh, the excel the calculation how to perform calculation in excel with appropriate format and if you have to uh, write the theory you have to use the word document and your typing speed would be reasonable in order to attempt the entire paper in the given time this paper is very challenging in terms of time management and student usually find it difficult to attempt the entire paper in three hours so time management is the key you have to learn how to attempt question within the time frame if you have questions or queries meantime you can write in the chat box so i will try to answer you during the session as well now move on now there are some tips given by the examination team how to approach the advanced taxation exam be aware that all question will be scenario based as i already told you that in section a there are lengthy scenarios there are multiple information and identifying the relevant information is a key number 1 the question will be scenario based number 2 all question will contain a mix of computational and discursive elements examiner in one part ask calculate in another part examiner ask explain and in some parts examiner ask explain with calculation so calculation is also very important but the focus is mainly on the theoretical side of the text knowledge more than one topic area of the syllabus may be examined in each question it is not like that that one complete topic will be examined rather for example uh, one question is related with uh, like two topics such as some parts related with iht some part related with cgt so multiple topics will be assessed question may involve consideration of more than one text some elements of planning might be asked the interaction of different text systems it means that the wider knowledge is needed rather than uh, selecting different topics you have to cover the syllabus in its entirety a very important question is there are four professional marks so how you can get maximum professional marks so in section a in the first question that is question number 1 which is comprises of 35 marks the examiner will ask about a particular format so if you follow that that what format is needed for example a memo is required so a proper format will give you one mark okay so the four marks are awarded on the basis of overall presentation of the requested format the approach taken to problem solving clarity of your explanation and calculation your calculation must be legible your explanation must be clear your relevant advice and the effectiveness of your communication for example if you are not following the format like the straight a part then b part then c part and d part and the haphazard calculation has been done so it means few marks will be lost so in order to get these professional marks your format your calculation your theory and how you are communicating with the examiner is very important so you can easily get few from these professional marks successful candidates are able to demonstrate a good level of accurate knowledge of tax system we are studying uk tax system so the latest finance act fa21 is required and you must have the knowledge yes that particular ppt will be available and those who will join our session the live and recorded one will be provided all the complete notes lectures everything so don't worry about that and first lecture recording and the notes ppt will be available for everyone no issue what you have to do you have to just visit this website in order to access i'm just giving you a link of the website just log in onto this website and that will be provided at the end of the session
and also the latest revision kit will be available as well those who need it either enrolled or not enrolled that doesn't matter so good understanding of the uk tax system the knowledge of the tax system is mandatory and also the broad forward knowledge of uk tx the previous syllabus as i told you this is an advanced version of the previous syllabus but in our discussion we'll start from the scratch we'll not consider this as an assumed knowledge as i told you most of the students are coming from the exemption they are they have taken the exemption so uh, it's not uh, like that that i will assume that you know tx knowledge but we will start from the scratch but those who have tax knowledge prior tax knowledge that would be an added advantage because the basic tax knowledge is also examined like for example the examiner might ask that uh, what is the due date of income tax and you can easily score one mark by just mentioning the due date of income tax similarly examiner might ask about the relief available for an individual that is how much personal allowance that particular indi individual can claim as i told you a tax sheet will be provided to you i will show you as well that uh, how much tax information which don't which you don't need to learn that will be given to you in the exam and what else you need to learn which is not available in the tax sheet now moving forward in an exam question it's very important that you must understand the requirement of the question because if the requirement is given about any particular topic and you're not following that requirement and you are writing something else and if that is accurate as well but examiner will not award you any single mark so you always consider your requirement carefully read the requirement carefully and in section a student find it difficult to read the requirement correctly because the requirement is very spread out and you have to identify the correct requirement and then you have to read the scenario and then you have to connect your text knowledge and in limited time that's not an easy task similarly always looks towards the marks available for example if a part question is having only 3 marks suppose examiner is given you 3 marks only so that means that you don't need to write much and if a question comprises of 10 to 12 marks then it means lots of information is needed so you will see the requirement of the question and you will see the marks availability and accordingly you have to write and you have to write precisely up to the requirement you don't don't need to write excessive don't need to write unnecessary uh, words unnecessary knowledge always write what has been asked in the question that is the best strategy now some tips from the examination team again i am repeating precise knowledge of the entire syllabus next one you have to refresh your previous knowledge of the tx syllabus you have to identify triggers in the exam you have to work on ethics in order to score easily on 5 marks so if you can see 5 marks for ethics and 4 professional marks 9 marks are available if you work smartly you can easily score these 9 marks and this is the extract of the examiner report that uh, those student who have passed this exam successfully what characteristics or what they have that they have passed this exam in first attempt and this is the repetition of what i have discussed that they have precise knowledge of all the tax syllabus they understand the requirement well they have explained well they they have calculated well they plan their answer and then they write they don't do not write haphazardly they write as per the requirement of the question 
now let me give you uh, a brief insight of uh, what are the topics and what we are going to discuss what would be our first topic i will also giving you the uh, intro of the first topic that we are going to discuss now the previous syllabus that was taxation there were five topics first one ist inheritance tax second one was cgt capital gain tax value added tax fourth one was a big one that is an income tax and fifth one was the corporation in advanced taxation all these are part of this atx syllabus but now the, there are wider areas that need to be covered in all these five areas and some additional topics like tax planning the focus will be on tax planning tax advices more relief and overseas aspects in each topic the examiner will ask about the overseas aspects as well as the issue of residence domicile status of an individual as well some new elements like stamp duty tax which was not covered previously so in each topic there is some advancement if someone have knowledge of value added tax from the previous syllabus few new topics must be learned in order to pass this paper as well as the previous knowledge the format of the paper is entirely dif uh, different in tx exam we have otqs we have mtqs we have scenario based question but in atx exam we have all scenario based question and more focus on theory and less focus on calculation now let me show you that uh, how much information is available in the tax sheet so that uh, you will have a sigh of relief that uh, at least these you don't require to memorize so this type of a sheet will be given to you in the exam you can see we are studying finance act 2021 and these are the tax rates and allowances given to you these are income tax rates personal allowances something about the residence status of an individual similarly uh, if an employee is using car the rules are given the rates are given the fuel benefits the car benefits property income something related with pension scheme the capital allowances related with the uh, purchase of assets similarly corporation tax rate and you can see here in finance act 2021 the tax rate is 19% in uk the company has to pay tax on their profit at the rate of 19% and in the previous 3 years the rate has not been changed so the rate is consistent in uk and in uk whether it's a small company or it's a large company the tax rate is same but the timing of the payment is different for large company and for the small company similarly we have value added tax a standard value added tax is 20% and we have registration limit because the vat is not compulsory for every business there are thresholds given so we have to identify when a company is eligible for value added tax similarly for inheritance tax we have been given the rates capital gain tax rates are given some reliefs are also given so this is like uh, national insurance contribution a uh, huge list is given similarly the penalties and official rate of interest stamp duty land tax it means that you have to use this this particular sheet and you have to apply you have to learn in the question how to extract these data this information and to apply in a given question one thing also the group aspect of the company this is also very important
Any question up till now? The passing ratio is, uh, you can say that uh, this exam's passing ratio is on average like uh, 38 to 40 percent, which is not bad in terms of the other professional papers. So usually the passing ratio is around on average 40 percent. The only problem that a student finds it difficult is the quantum of information, the depth of the syllabus. And you have to memorize, right? I told you reason. One of the big reason is uh, the syllabus is very huge. Lots of information, huge syllabus. Number one problem, number one challenge, you have to memorize. And the second thing is that uh, time management. Most of the student only attempt 80% of the paper. They're not able to attempt the entire 100 marks. So you have to learn how to memorize smartly, number one, and how to plan your time in such a way that at least you can attempt like 100% of paper. Remember that it's, it's, there are so many topics that are frequently being repeated. So sometimes you, you, if you attempt any question in the revision kit, and that particular topic will be examined again. For example, tax losses. Examiner always asks about the tax losses, the group structure. Examiner is very keen to ask about the group aspects of taxation. Similarly, about pension, CGT reliefs. So what you have to do, you have to cover the syllabus. You have to practice the question and practice in the given time, means under the timing, under the exam condition. For me, the recipe is number one, cover entire syllabus. Now from where you have to cover the syllabus? Obviously from, from your tutor, from the lectures of your tutor, okay? From the notes, you have to follow the notes. Study text is very huge. So I refer uh, the notes rather than study text. And the notes have been designed in such a way that they cover the entire information of the study text. Then practice. And you don't need to use the past paper. Practice using the Kaplan revision kit. One revision kit is uh, enough. And there are approx, you can say that 80 questions. And it's very difficult to attempt these 80 questions. So the more you practice the similar type of question, the more you will learn, the more you identify that how examiner is asking about any particular topic. And then you can score good in your real exam. You can also prepare summary notes. You can use our summary notes as well in order to memorize it effectively, the diagrams, key dates, so that you can produce on the exam day. And you have to start memorizing, start learning from the, from the day one. Yes, I am going to show you the first topic that we are going to start and a kind of feel of the topic you can see. I usually start with the, the inheritance tax. This is a bit easy topic. So from the start, not that much difficult. So can you see the slides of inheritance tax?
so these are the kind of notes very easy to memorize what do you have to do you have to read you have to read you have to read you have to read the more you read the more you memorize these are the exemptions that you have to use in the exam question so these notes have been designed as per the kaplan study text because i refer kaplan study text as well as the kaplan revision kit which is enough in order to pass this exam yes study text is a huge one so i don't recommend to follow that study text rather the rules that have been written in the study text is summarized in these notes so what you have to follow number 1 lectures number 2 notes and number 3 past paper practice questions given in the kaplan revision kit so if you if you work on these three items you will definitely pass you will definitely score at least 50 marks now our first topic that i'm going to start i'm giving you an idea feel of that topic is inheritance tax i h t inheritance tax is basically applicable on uh, two situations one is lifetime gift and other is death estate that is gift on death these are the two situations two areas we we need to work out on how much iht is applicable so if an individual who is alive is uh, trying to make a gift that is covered under lifetime gifts and on the death of that particular individual those uh, who are asking about the uh, the details uh, it's better to ask me on my whatsapp number uh, after this session so i'll give you the details that how we move along uh, and uh, the as far as the live classes uh, timing as far as the recorded lectures duration or the quantum of the recorded lectures that will be shared to you i will i will share my personal number you can whatsapp me for that detail we have an uh, whatsapp group as well check i have shared my number you can also watch uh, the, the few few lectures or few clips on uh, my youtube channel i will share the link of that as well or you can search my name you can get the clips you can get an idea of uh, uh, how easy the lectures are are you able to understand it properly or not now as far as the lifetime gifts whenever a person is making a lifetime gifts that can be classified uh, into two types mainly normally we can classify it into three types but normally there are two types of lifetime gifts one is called potentially exempt transfer and another is called chargeable lifetime transfer this is potentially exempt transfer and this is chargeable life time transfer now you have to identify if someone is making a lifetime gift how you can classify that particular gift as a potentially exempt transfer or a chargeable life time transfer so normally if you transfer any item or any gift to a trust that classified normally as tlt a chargeable lifetime transfer and if any gift have been given to like uh, spouse 
son daughter brother sisters this is usually fall under potentially exempt transfer spouse gift is an exempt one any gift to a spouse or civil partner is exempt whether has been given during lifetime or from that state this is a benefit if husband and wife have husband is transferring gift to wife or a civil partner is transferring to another civil partner there will be no iht consequences completely exempt but others might be classified as potentially exempt transfer or chargeable lifetime transfer now if there is a, a lifetime transfer which is classified as pet that is potentially exempt transfer will that be taxable or not so at the time of transfer there will be no tax for example the gift has been given on 1st january 2016 someone has given a gift to his son on 1st january 2016 and the value of the gift is 2 lakh 50000 suppose so there will be no tax in that particular tax year our tax year starts from 6th april and the ending date of the tax year of an individual in uk is 5th april so 6th april 21 and 5th april 22 this is the tax year 21 22 and we are studying the rule of tax year 21 22 although the tax year 2021 rules are all, all is also the same there is no difference in iht so for example if uh, uh, you have to apply the iht in the previous year the rates the relief are also the same nothing there is no difference so at the time of transfer there is no tax but at the time of the death of donor donor is the person who is making the gift there might be a situation that such gift might be taxable and there is a seven year rule we have to identify the timing from the date of transfer of gift to the death of the donor if donor die within seven years of making the gift there will be a different situation and if the death is after seven years of making a gift there will be a different situation so whenever there is a gift which is classified as pet no tax at the time of transfer but after the transfer you have to identify the death of the donor if donor die within 7 years that particular gift will be taxable now on the death of the donor but if donor survive 7 years then completely exempt there will be no tax at all well as i as i told you that uh, tax labels is huge but keeping in mind if you have just one paper and you are starting it now we have september october november so if you consistently work on regular basis this is doable you can easily pass this paper right and we are preparing for december exam but it all depends on how much time you can allocate on a regular basis when i say regular basis it is preferable to identify like 1 hour or 1.5 hour daily and on weekends like on saturdays and sundays if you have a off day on saturday and sunday then at least 3 to 4 hours on each off day because you have to practice a lot you have to memorize 
and by practicing you can memorize it well right the more you practice the more you can memorize now suppose for example the transfer date is 1st january 2016 now you will ask what is the date of death suppose that person's death is 31st december 2022 now identify the time so from 2016 till 2022 it's 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 and 22 within 7 years so if donor die within 7 years means 7 years or less it means now this particular gift is taxable who will pay the tax now because donor has died now who will pay the tax so tax is to be paid by donee that is the person who receive that gift in my example his son will be liable to pay iht this is one scenario right this is called potentially exempt transfer is that clear that at the time of transfer there is no tax neither donor nor donee no tax is to be paid but you have to be the date of death if donor survive the 7 years deadline there will be no tax if he die within 7 years there will be tax to be payable by the donee the receiver of the gift how much that will learn later on how we will calculate the tax liability how much reliefs are available what is the tax rate how you can apply relief exemption so and so on what would be the due date all along now second category of the gift clt that is called chargeable lifetime transfer in that situation at the time at the time of gift it is not exempt it is taxable it is not exempt this is partially taxable not completely taxable and who will pay the tax it is a choice either donor can pay tax or trust can pay tax which is donee in that case anyone can opt if donor is initiated to pay there will be a tax rate of 20% and if donee sorry tax rate is 25% and if donee is agreed to pay the tax rate is 20% this is a lifetime partial tax after this the same rule applicable on death of donor there might be a situation that further tax is to be paid by donee the same 7 years rule if donor die within 7 years or survive 7 years after 7 years if donor die within 7 years then additional tax is to be paid and who is going to pay that tax who is responsible is a common sense at the time of death the tax is always payable by the donee that is trust and if donee donor survive the 7 years then no additional tax only the lifetime tax is paid no additional tax so in an exam question first of all you have to identify whether it's a lifetime gift if yes it's a lifetime gift then you have to identify whether it's potentially exempt transfer or a chargeable lifetime transfer and then accordingly we will identify exemption reliefs 
taxable value, then apply the tax rate and you will find the IHT payable by either donor or donee. Is that clear? Any question up till now? This is our first orientation session, which is free for everyone. And one more will be in the coming days. Uh, maybe on Sunday, I will announce it on my WhatsApp group. You will uh, get the information if you are on WhatsApp group. So we'll provide uh, this one as well as the next one so that a student will get an idea that how tutor is teaching. If a student is comfortable, then the student can purchase the lectures and continue with us. And if the student is not, uh, I mean, comfortable, then a student can decide not to take the lectures. It is always advisable that if you have to opt any tutor, just take first few demo lectures. In that demo lecture, you can easily identify how well a tutor is teaching, how well you are understanding. It's very important. I hope you are understanding my point. Now, if we have to identify how much tax is to be paid by either donor or donee, we have to follow a format. But first of all, we learn to calculate what is transfer of value. This is the value of the item that has been given as a gift. Sometimes this transfer of value will be given to you in the exam. And sometimes we have to calculate. Usually, in the case of transfer of shares, you have to calculate. So suppose, for example, transfer of value is given. I already told you, uh, if you have any query after this session, you can contact me on my WhatsApp number or the WhatsApp group. Any number you have on WhatsApp group, you can contact. We'll respond you accordingly. So suppose that transfer of value has been given to you in the question. Suppose it is 250000 Mr. A has given a gift to his uh, daughter of worth 250000 or to a trust worth 250000 Suppose it has been given. What do you have to do? You have to use a format. Now you can see. Let me show you my slides where you can find this format. Exemptions and other things. Now see. This is a basic pro forma. First, you have to identify what is what is transfer of value you have to identify what is transfer of value then you have to deduct all kind of exemptions after deducting exemptions we will get a figure of chargeable amount then we will deduct one relief which is called nrb then we will get taxable amount and then we have to apply either 20% or 25% why there are two rates given 20 and 25. Any idea? Why there are two rates? I just told you that in case of lifetime transfer, either donor has to pay tax or donee. So that's why there are two rates. If donee will pay tax, we'll use 20%. If donor has to pay tax, we'll use 25%. So accordingly, this 20% has been also has also been given in the tax sheet. So we'll apply 20 or 25% and then we will get the taxable value. Now, suppose, let me give you an example. 
suppose let's discuss we have a clt and we have uh, a transfer of value suppose it is 400000 and now we need to deduct the exemptions now we need to learn how many exemptions we have let me just give an idea of first kind of exemption which is called annual exemption today i am not teaching you inheritance tax i am just giving an idea about inheritance tax so every year we have an annual exemption of how much p1000 pound this is the annual exemption every year so if the date of gift is tax year 1617 we will get 3000 exemption that we will deduct from 400000 and also there is 3000 brought forward from the previous year if there is available if that is available so suppose this is the first gift of my life so from the transfer of value i will deduct 3000 of current year the gift year and i will also deduct 3000 of last year if this is a first gift so this is 3 lakh 94000 now this is the chargeable amount now you have to carefully identify whether this 3000 in the current year is available or in the last year is it available or it has already been used one year brought forward is allowed just one year so if the year of gift is 16 17 take 3000 of this year and then check the previous year if it is available take 6000 if it is not available then use the current year only and this is the current year exemption this is not given on each item for example suppose there are two gifts in the tax year 21 22 we have two gifts first gift is on 15th may 21 first gift worth 400000 and on 15th of august there is another gift which is worth 300000 there is only one exemption not exemption for every gift so we'll use the exemption from the first gift current year 3000 and previous year 3000 now when it comes to this one there is no exemption available why because we have already utilized on the first gift in the tax year did you get this point if there are more than one gift in a particular tax year always use the exemption in the first gift you don't have any choice you have to use from the first gift so it is a possibility that in the second gift you might have nothing to claim for exemption so this is called annual exemption and there are other exemption as well such as wedding exemption and other exemption political exemption exemption related to charity so we will study in detail how many exemptions are available and in what situation we have to use these exemption and then we have to apply this particular format which is uh, this is the format of lifetime tax transfer of value identify the exemptions find out the chargeable amount deduct nrb which is a relief find out the taxable amount apply the tax rate and there will be a iht liability available which either donor has to pay or donee has to pay 